Hey, what's up, guys? So it's been over two weeks now that Phase 2 has been released, and I think it was a good time to just go over my investments, see how they did, and kind of discuss why I think some did a lot better than I expected, and obviously why some did a lot worse than I expected. Uh, if you guys haven't watched my Phase 2 investment video and you're curious as to why I chose some of these items, uh, make sure to just go check it out. I'll just put a link up above. And again, just want to kind of reiterate that this isn't to flex or anything. Uh, this video is just mainly just to give you my thoughts as to uh, why some of these investments did well and why some of them didn't pan out so well. All right, so enough rambling. I'll put some footage of me opening the mailbox in the background and let's just get through it. So starting with my biggest investment, which was mainly all the herbs and, and those potions that we had invested a little over 6,000 gold in. Uh, and we went ahead and just converted most of those herbs and materials into elixirs and flasks on an elixir mastery alt. And I think this was probably one of my safest and more profitable investment as well. We ended up selling all the potions for roughly nine and a half thousand gold. So a very good profit on these. Uh, my guess regarding the marks of Illidari that I had mentioned in the previous video was correct. And... I think a lot of the guilds kind of hit a wall as well uh, during the last few bosses in SSC and TK, which kind of made the prices of consumable surge. So overall, I think uh, we did make a pretty good read on this market. Uh, one thing I will point out, though, that uh, I kind of didn't realize, which could have screwed up our, our investment, is with the introduction of the elite trees and Skedis, uh, which gave actually quite a lot of like mana thistles and just all types of outland herbs. Uh, when you herb their bodies. And now after like two or three weeks uh, that they're out, it seems that things have calmed down a bit uh, in terms of their herb prices and things are back to normal. So I think that if, say, the raids themselves uh, would have been a lot less th difficult, uh, I could have probably gotten screwed on this uh, since a lot of people would have started herbing the, the trees and uh, the need for consumables would, would have been a lot lower. Uh, so overall, uh, I think it could have been, made a big difference. So in the future, I guess maybe one thing I'll have to watch out for is just not to miss some of those content releases that, at least in my head, were kind of irrelevant, but they do actually matter. So the second investment, again, which was very similar to the first one, was the Super Mana Potions. Uh, this one was uh, pretty safe as well. Uh, there's not really much more to say that uh, I haven't really gone over. Uh, however, one thing to note, though, that I kind of found interesting was that even if people could have used the uh, Tempest Keep-specific mana potions and the uh, Cool Fang Armaments to uh, convert into SSC-specific mana potions as well, uh, the prices of the regular mana potions were still like through the roof, even if the other ones were a lot cheaper. Uh, so I found that kind of interesting. I guess uh, probably the reason why is most people kind of had that convenience factor. They just wanted to use their regular uh, mana potions that they've always been using. Uh, so I'm kind of happy that that's kind of what I ended up choosing to invest in and it really turned out well. Next item we had invested in was the Huge Spotted Fail Tales. Uh, so these were kind of interesting because I initially really thought that these were only going to be available in Phase 3. Uh, but Blizzard surprised us and the recipe was actually available right when Phase 2 launched. Uh, so I went ahead and day one got myself the recipe and I started crafting the Fisherman's Feast. However, I was actually really disappointed. Like the Fisherman's Feast didn't sell very quickly at all. And honestly, even after a few days, the price started dipping quite a bit. Um, I'm lucky enough to have actually bought these at such a cheap price that even with the, uh, the price dip, I was able to still make around 100 gold on these, which is honestly not too bad. Uh, but uh, looking back on it, uh, if I were to do this all over again, uh, I would say that I would just skip these all together. The time it took to uh, buy all of these and even worse to, to relist and constantly try to, to sell these uh, really wasn't worth the, the time hassle. So overall, I would say this was kind of a loser, even if we did make gold. Next, we had uh, some dark runes. I mean... It really wasn't an investment per se since I farmed these, uh, but I'll still include them. I sold these for roughly 15 to 16 gold each, uh, and they sold quite quickly. I think, uh, again, for the Dark Runes, I had a pretty decent read on, on how they played out. 
and really wasn't surprised to see them at all at like 16 gold all the way to almost 20 gold at times during raid nights. And for our Dawnstones, uh, if you guys remember, I initially bought these for roughly 25 gold each. And I was really, really disappointed at the time that uh, I was making the video because uh, the Dawnstones were going for much less than than the, the 25 gold initial investment. Uh, but I definitely did get lucky because I didn't really think that uh, one of the big markets for gems is actually uh, the times when new arena season starts. And since we had all the season one gear discounted and the new season two off pieces that a lot of people were were kind of buying at that time, uh, a bunch of people uh, then wanted to buy gems to, to simply gem that gear. Uh, so I kind of lucked out and sold most of these during that period. Uh, so we profited around 500 gold on the gems. Nothing crazy, but uh, I'm just happy, honestly, that I didn't lose money on these. And lastly, the Primal Fires. So definitely my worst investment uh, by far, uh, but it could have been a lot worse if I held on to these. So I lost roughly 100 gold on the, the Primal Fires, and I think the reason why this didn't really end up being a good investment was that I had initially uh, bought them in hopes that people would kind of all rush to, to get their crafted uh, items with the, the new crafted recipes from phase two. Uh, however, um, people are kind of getting the recipes to drop over like a multiple periods of, of weeks, right? So a lot of people don't get their their crafted recipes right off the gate week one. Uh, so what that means is that uh, the demand for, for primal fires was, was a lot lower. At least it was spread out over multiple weeks. And uh, unfortunately, there's... Still, even to this day, a lot of uh, gold farmers that are farming primal fires uh, at the typical locations like the Throne of Kil'jaeda and such. Uh, so looking back on it, honestly, I should have just made a better judgment call on these and just avoided them. Like I mentioned, I'm, I'm quite happy that I dumped all the primal fires very early on uh, when I realized that uh, the price wasn't going to recover. So I did cut my losses, uh, but uh, looking back, should have just avoided. So that summarizes the results of our phase two investments. Uh, overall, we made a grand total of 7,800 gold. And I know a lot of the people in the comments from the phase two investment video uh, would have liked the video to come out a lot earlier than it actually did. So I do apologize for that. Uh, if I do end up making a phase three investment video, don't worry, I'll uh, make sure to post it a lot earlier for you guys. Uh, so if you guys like the video, as always, make sure to leave a like. Uh, it really does help out the channel a ton. Uh, I got a lot more content I'm really excited about that's coming really soon. So if you guys don't want to miss out on that as well, just make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.